lead by manufacturing trade body if chair Dame Judith Hackett, the review was launched following a series of fire safety tests on aluminium composite material ACM cladding samples. Last month the terms of reference for the inquiry were released. The government has now released a call for evidence to the review, in particular looking for responses from professionals working with building, housing and fire safety legislation for example legislation found in the government's own guidance paper, approved document B. It will look at what areas of current legislation work well and will identify areas which need to be improved. Local Authority Building Control Director of Technical Policy Barry Turner said he supported the review and would be contributing evidence, but cautioned against rushing into conclusions. It's something that needs to be done, and I think it's something that needs to be supported, and I just hope that it's carried out in a manner that looks to address the issues that people raise, he told New Civil Engineer. I think we have got a long way to go before we actually realize and understand what the repercussions will be and what actually needs reviewing. A construction industry response group has been set up to help government quickly implement any new regulations resulting from the review. The review will complement the public inquiry, which began last week. An initial report will be submitted this autumn before a final report is released next spring. Evidence can be submitted until 13 October. Call for evidence government's 10 key questions to what extent are the current building, housing, and fire safety legislation and associated guidance clear and understood by those who need to follow them are the roles, responsibilities and accountabilities of different individuals in relation to adhering to fire safety requirements or assessing compliance at each key stage of the building process clear, effective and timely does the current system place a clear overarching responsibility on named parties for maintaining ensuring fire safety requirements are met in a high-rise multi-occupancy building, where could this be made clearer? what would be the benefits of doing so what evidence is there that those with responsibility for demonstrating compliance with building regulations, housing fire safety requirements at various stages in the life cycle of a building assessing compliance with those requirements, are appropriately trained and accredited and are adequately resourced to perform their role effectively including whether there are enough qualified professionals in each key area is the current checking and inspection regime adequately backed up through enforcement and sanctions is there an effective means for tenants and other residents to raise concerns about the fire safety of their buildings and to receive feedback where might changes be required to ensure tenants residents voices on fire safety can be heard in the future does the way building components are safety checked certified and marketed in relation to building regulations requirements need to change what would be the advantages to advantages of creating a greater degree of differentiation in the regulatory system between high-rise multi-occupancy residential buildings and other less complex types of residential and residential buildings where specifically do you think further differentiation might assist in ensuring adequate fire safety and what would be the benefits of such changes what examples exist from outside England of good practice in regulatory systems that aim to ensure fire safety in similar buildings? What aspects should be specifically considered? And why what examples of good practice from regulatory regimes and other industrial sectors that are dependent on high-quality safety environments are there that we could learn from what key lessons are there for enhancing fire safety?